Amen. Amen. So we pray to the Lord. I want you to go with me on um, prayer. And I can feel that burden of prayer. So I'm going to say around those terms. I want you to go with me to 2 Kings chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. And we're going to start at verse number 17. The Bible reads, And the woman conceived and bared a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of her life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his fathers to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said unto the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. And he set her, I'm sorry, he set on her knees unto noon, yeah. then died. Yeah. So this, this woman's baby died on her lap. And we're going to read verses I'm skipping down to verse 32 says, And when Elijah was coming to the house, and behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. And he went in, therefore, and shut the door, and upon them twined, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid upon the child, and put his mouth to his mouth, his eyes to his eyes, his hand to his hand. And he stretched himself upon the child, yeah. and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Glory. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon the child. And the Bible said the child sneezed seven times, yeah. and the child opened his eyes. Father, we thank you for the wicked word, Daddy. We thank you, God, tonight for clarity. Father, we thank you for understanding. Father, let the Spirit um, speak expressly. Father, you know every need in this house. Daddy, you know every condition. And Daddy, we ask you to have your way. And Father, any uh, demonic force that is sent to bind up this service, we bind you up right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. But Father, you say where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we thank you for the liberty that's in this house. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed us to preach good tidings to the meek, to loose the captive, to open the sight of the blind, to heal the broken. Do just that tonight, Father. Fix what's broken. Mend what needs to be healed, Daddy. Deliver and have your way. And we give you praise and honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. I want to teach from the topic tonight. Uh, go home and lay on it. My God. Go home and and lay on it. It's something that I, I was brewing in my spirit because I felt the spirit of intercession and prayer as we uh, left this room tonight. And it's something that prayer produces and opens up the porters of the supernatural. Right. We're living in a time where the supernatural power of God seems like it is, seems like, I, I want to express that word expressively, it seems like it is slowly declining where individuals are more interested in position and they neglect posture and power. Wow. Um, but the reality is uh, we, we, we not only seek for position, we need power while being in position. Right. And posture speaks of one's stance. It reflects one's worship or commitment to God and it's more than just it's 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 much more than just being a church worker but I learned even uh, while being in ministry and pastoring for the last 11 years I learned you just don't need church workers you need workers slash warriors right. you need people that understands spiritual warfare because right. the church must be in seek of unlocking the kingdom of God not only by revelation and mysteries but by the miracles that is due upon the believer and note that is denoting the gifts of the spirit Jesus had a message and that message was repent 
because the kingdom of heaven was at hand. The supernatural has almost become absent in the life of the believer when the Bible declares signs and wonders shall follow those that believe. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you a believer? Neighbor, are you a believer? Some, church, some church people have, uh, uh, churches or people have even Im uh, implemented um, entertainment supplements to uh, give the excuse for the lack of accommodating of walking in the power of signs and wonders. And at this point, I'm totally convinced that the church is in need of spiritual assessment and, and, and spiritual alignment because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, for the kingdom of God is not just in word, but the kingdom of God is in power. Yeah. The Holy Spirit had me to deal with um, two things concerning the bride, the church, the ecclesia, um, what hinders them from pleasing God, and I think I expressed this a little on last night. One, there's too much carnality, and then two, there's too much unbelief. Carnality and unbelief is the death of your Faith. Right. Wow. Carnality and unbelief it is the death of one's faith. The spirit of unbelief is a sign to kill the spoken word of God. Romans wow. uh, uh, 8 and 8 says, so then they that were in the flesh could not please God. God told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, not of the flesh. They that are born of the flesh are bigger of the flesh are born of the flesh but they that are born of the born of spirit must be born of spirit or walk in the spirit must be born of spirit and when we come to God a lot of us watch this we are stuck with confession and not transformation right. and right. when you go through from confession to transformation then there's impartation of the Holy Spirit right. you don't look the way you used to look you don't sound the way you used to sound but I have been born again. He yeah. used 11 and 6 said, it is impossible to please God without faith. Um, he that comes to God must believe that he is God. And so when we come to God, we must believe that he is God. And so when you are carnal, it's hard to perceive spiritual revelation. Everybody in this room can agree with me that what moves God is faith. This small word with big results at the end is faith. Faith. If faith moved God, then what is faith? I'm glad you guys asked me. Hebrews chapter number 11, we all can identify and root this text. Hebrews chapter number 11, one said, now faith, now faith, now, now faith now. is the substance of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen. Here Jesus released the authority to Peter. He tells Peter, Peter, Upon this rock, yeah. I would build my church on the faith, on the fact that you believe that I am the Christ. So, so you guys know in the text, he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? He said, he said, some say that you are Elijah, some say that you are a prophet. He asked Peter, Peter, who do you say that I am? Yeah. He said, ye are the son of the living yeah. God. You got it right, Peter. And because, hear me good, you know who I am, a Upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. I give you the keys to the kingdom, Peter. Yeah. The keys to the kingdom was released to Peter based upon the fact that he knew who his God was. Yeah. So having a revelation of the Christos, the Jesus, not just the need, a need does not move God, your faith moves God. So it is to say that your need does not only move God, but however, when you allow your need to attract you to God, and have because you have a revelation of who God is, it allows you to walk in a dimension of what I call, say this with me, first level faith. First level faith. First level faith is not based upon a need. First level faith is based upon a revelation about who God is, and then it maneuvers to what God can do, his omnipotence, having unlimited power, being able
able to do anything knowing that he is the rewarder. And we confirm this in scripture as we visit Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is God. Yeah. The revelation of who he is. And that word and and with a comma. Y'all look like some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The comma is a conjunction word joining two things together at the same time. Not only do I want you to believe that he is God, but I need you to believe and understand that he is a rewarder yeah. to them that diligently seek him. So in other words, one must believe that he's God and the rewarder. One must believe that he's God and the healer. Yeah. One must believe that he's God and the provider. Another thing that you must understand about faith is that faith is dimensional. Uh -uh, you must understand it, it's extensive. It, it extends, it grows, it progresses. Remember Peter when he steps off the boat, when there's a storm upon the water. Peter exercised what I call first level faith first. He looks because Peter's not crazy. He looks and said, Jesus, if it's you, be it me to come. Because I have a revelation of him, I step out on him. So he operates in first level faith. But when he undergoes warfare, Peter falls into the water. A many Christian lose the faith when they undergo what we call unexpected warfare. When the Bible says, hear me good, count it all joy when you find yourself going through divers. Temptations, what's this? It's the working of your faith. God is not trying to kill you. He's trying to extend what you believe. But the neighbor said, neighbor, he's extending my faith. Uh -huh. He extended my faith because Peter has the faith to step out of the boat. But then Peter does not possess the faith to stand up. A lot of people can step out. But many people can't stand up. on 
the Sea of Galilee and they woke up Jesus and he speaks to the storm and he tells the disciples, ye are of little faith. And this is where faith can be complicated because if you can remember when the disciples begin to cast out a devil, they wrestled with small faith. What happens when you have the faith to move a mountain but you don't obtain the faith to cast out a devil? Because watch this, I gave them power and authority but because there's different dimensions of faith, sometimes your situation requires another depth of faith. Say it with me, consecrated faith. Consecrated faith. <laughs> because there are some only. There are some things that only, only. There are some things that only, only come out by fasting and praying. And this is where we go to our main text. Our, our main text, the idea of the Shulamite woman. And ladies and gentlemen, she is in need of the restoration of her dead son. Um, the Bible says we have life and death more abundantly. Um, but this lady is facing death laying in her lap. The story of Elijah and the Shunammite woman is a very popular story as it focuses to the need of this woman that allows her to be attracted to this man of God. However, tonight I want to bring your attention to the posture of how this woman of God, the Shunammite woman, responds to a dead promise. How she responds to a dead promise. The Shunammite woman in her background, her character, she was a generous woman, hospitable, a wealthy woman, capable of showing kindness to God, prophet. Those that know the story, this prophet um, would, would, would come by the city often and she would build a chamber for the prophet to lay in. And because God had favored her, the prophet asked her, what do you have need of? Watch this, I didn't ask God for this, God gave it to me. And she said, I don't have need of anything. And his assistant said, she has need of a son. And then the prophet speaks the promise over her life and said, God is going to give you a son around this time next year. Yeah. Boom, bingo, the miracle happens. But guess what? The son is in the field with the daddy. And what God promised her dies on her lap. She has to carry her sorrow without even knowing her outcome. She loses her promise. Son. Has anybody in the room ever lost something that God promised you? I'm so happy that God knows the plans that he has for us. Thoughts of peace, not of evil to give us and expect it in. Do me a favor, action. I'm whispering to your neighbor, say, neighbor, Expect the best in the end. They tell them it's not over. You better dance. You better shout because it's not over until God says it's over. What captivates my attention the most in this particular story, ladies and gentlemen, this woman loses her promise but still maintains her press. I gotta say it again. She loses her promise but she still maintains her press. No observation. Anytime you are under pressure, never lose your press because Paul said, I press toward. You gotta press toward. You gotta press toward the miracle, the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. One thing, um, it's one thing to have dead situations in your life. Hear me good, believers, but it's a whole thing to have a dead prophecy. It may be some dead things in my life, but, but to have a dead promise, this thing has to be about me and God. Because the Bible speaks of three uh, dispensations of time. If you notice before God established the law, he established promise. He put a rainbow in the sky. So we can remember a promise is a promise with God. And God can never lie. What he spoke, it is complicated. It has a divine assignment to accomplish what he sent it to do. I came to tell somebody your promises are a sign to make it by God. And there is no demon, there's no if, there's no lie, there's no hater, there's no conspiracy, there's no witch, there's no warlock, there's no haters that can stop. I need mean, to shout there's a promise. His word cannot go empty. This woman had faith. I'm telling you, it, she does not 
mislead me because ladies and gentlemen this woman mastered first level faith she knew who her God was as the Bible say they that know their God shall be strong see when you know them you got a strength that the devil can't break when you know him for that know they, they that know their God shall be strong in the Lord shout I'm a survivor I'm a survivor I need some people to shout I'm anointed to survive because I know in whom my God I know in whom my God is ladies and gentlemen this is not the first time we hear the word lay it's mentioned in the story with the Shunammite woman during the time she is experiencing what we call hardship but rather this was um, Elijah would occasionally go into a room that the Shunammite woman prepared for him um, it was I call Elijah's secret place which was a um, no foreign place for him it's safe to say it was Elijah's secret uh, war room see believers you don't pray when it gets hard no no when I woke up this morning I had him on my mind a matter of fact on the way to work I was saying God thank you a matter of fact the Bible said the Bible said acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall watch this direct your path you don't move without prayer Not, you don't pray when it gets hard but when I got up thank you for life thank you for breathing thank you for closing Yeah. 
for me because my mom died um, in 05. My daddy died when I was 12. My older sister died two years after my mother. Uh, my grandma died a year after them. So I know what death feels like. I'm no novice to pain. And I can just imagine she has her dad's son in her lap. She could have easily let fear grip her. She could have easily threw in the towel and gave up. But this radical faith in a woman, watch this, does not accept the results of the condition of her child. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the epitome of what I call faith. This is the, the, the epitome of what I call faith because this woman could have did two things. Number one, y'all, she could have called for the undertaker and say, Mr. Undertaker, y'all come take my son. He's got no breath in his body. Then she could have called for the mourners. I need somebody to help mourn me through. Hear me good. She does not call for the undertakers. She does not call for the uh, other mourners. Instead of preparing for his burial, she prepared for his revival. I came to tell somebody, you cannot prepare for the burial. Cancel the funeral arrangement. Tell the eulogist, I'm sorry. Thank you, but no thank you. But what God has promised me, you got to live. Tell your neighbor, we are not preparing for revival. Yeah. Uh, faith is proactive. Instead of this woman taking her baby to the grave, here be good, she takes the baby to the chamber. Uh, did this bless me because uh, she takes the baby to the same room where Elijah used to go to pray. That was the wrong place to take her. She takes this baby to the same room, the same bed that the prophet slept in. And then, watch this, she has the audacity to leave the dead baby in the room by himself. After leaving the dead baby in the room by himself, this woman has to know that he is a reward. Now, she, she knew that he was gone, but to leave a dead baby in the chamber, she has to know that he is a reward. This woman of God, I watch this, she hops on a donkey, drives
that are worship Lord today. That are worship Lord today. That are worship Lord today. Keep on worship. Keep on worship. Right there. Right there. Right there. Come on. Come on. The enemy hates this posture. Get up and go. Get up and go. Get up and go. The enemy hates when you work. He hates when you worship. He hates when you lift up a sound to God. That's it. Lift up a sound down here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift up a sound. You're breaking through. You're breaking through barriers. Come on. Lift up that sound out of your belly. Let it feel like a river out of your mouth. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I thank you. As the Holy Ghost, as you're worshiping, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is refreshing in you from the inside out. Fatigueness is being off of you now. Fatigueness is screwed up fatigueness and frustration. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, Father, I thank you. Layers of deep fatigueness and frustration is coming off of you. As you begin to worship the black oration, often this place that worship.
I would tell Carol, I said, Carol, thank you that much.